Hmm. Something that's been bothering me over the last couple of days is how indifferent the Mac Pro is to the Mac Studio. Yep, the brand new Mac Pro has four PCIe slots inside it. Also, we do have eight Thunderbolt ports too, but there are a lot of other bits and pieces that are very similar between the Mac Studio and also the Mac Pro. So today what I've decided to do is I'm gonna do a Mac Studio versus the Mac Pro, the differences that you could get, and the only reason why you should probably buy a Mac Pro over the Mac Studio. And with that guys, let's begin. So at WWDC 2023, Apple announced the updated Mac Studio and it came with the M2 Max and of course it came with that brand new M2 Ultra chipset inside it. For looks wise and ports wise and everything like that, including the storage, everything is the same compared to the last version of the Mac Studio where we got the M1 Max and also the M1 Ultra. The M2 Max chipset is the exact same chipset that we can find in the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pros and we know all the bits and pieces about that. And the M2 Ultra is essentially two M2 Maxes stitched together just like what Apple did with the M1 Max. They stitched two of those together to make the M1 Ultra and voila, we have the M2 Ultra the same this time round with two M2 Maxes stitched. For me, the cool thing I love about the M2 Ultra is the ability that it can control so many different monitors, as you can see here. And of course, its overall horsepower is gonna be absolutely crazy for absolute pro users out there amongst you. The look for the actual Mac Studio, like I said, hasn't really changed at all. So we still do have six Thunderbolt 4 ports on it. So there's four on the back and there's also two on the front. And also on the front, you have that super fast SD card slot, what is really, really handy to have. I use it all the time. You also get the HDMI 2.1 port and also you get two USB 3.2 ports on the back too, what are really, really good. And overall, the actual size of the Mac Studio is really nice. It's round about two and a half sort of Mac mini stacked on of each other and it fits well on your desk. But now let's turn our attention to the Mac Pro. This was also announced at WWDC 2023. And to me, this is where things got a little bit strange for me. Essentially, it is exactly the same as the Mac Studio, except for a few different features. And to be honest, there's only three of them. The first of all is that instead of having six Thunderbolt 4 ports, you get eight. So woohoo there. Also that the SSD storage inside the Mac Pro can also be up upgraded by some kits that Apple now provide, except for, as you can see here, these kits are super, super expensive. So I don't think many people are gonna be doing this. I think they will be putting in their own SSDs or plugging them in, into the rear. And talking about plugging in your own sort of SSDs, this is the other main feature of the Mac Pro. It actually has four times PCIe four slots on inside it. And also four of those slots are spaced out for double space sort of PCI sort of um, boards and things like this to go inside, what is pretty handy. But overall, you're gonna be paying an extra $3,000 just to get the ability to have two extra Thunderbolt 4 ports, also those four PCI slots, and also the ability to upgrade the storage inside it. And to me, in my opinion, that is just not worth it at all. $3,000 for that. That is absolutely crazy. Now, I know what a lot of you are gonna say straight away. Well, Matt, those PCIe slots are needed. Well, they are and they're not. But I think, to be honest, the Mac Pro is becoming more and more niche now. And I don't think many of them are gonna sell. To be deadly honest, you know, the SSDs that you can get that run over Thunderbolt 4 are more than enough for most people in their video editing, for example. So if you're recording at 8K or things like this, generally speaking, if you have an SSD plugged in to a Thunderbolt 4 port, and if you buy the correct one, then actually this will work out far cheaper than getting yourself an SSD to slot into a PCIe slot. Don't get me wrong, there are going to be those few niche people who are going to need that super snappy SSD to run faster over PCIe 4 than the equivalent of Thunderbolt 4. But like I said, that is going to be a very, very rare few. To be honest, this is going to be like the top businesses out there. These are going to be people like who are working in Universal Studios or Disney or things like this are going to need that. Not the standard people are probably watching this video here, but if you do work at Disney and Universal, that's really cool that you are checking out my video. Now, obviously, I'm going to hear a lot of you guys say, 
saying, well, Matt, the great thing about the Mac Pro is everything's nice and tidy inside it. But if you look at the size difference of the Mac Pro to the Mac Studio, it is huge. Look at it, it's ginormous here. And also just to say, oh, look, it's more tidier inside that. Generally, if you're gonna be buying yourself a Mac Pro, you're gonna have about a million and one wires hanging out the back of it, like most people have hanging outside of a Mac Studio or a Mac Mini. You're gonna be plugging in lots of bits and pieces into this device. And if you're not, then you've bought the Mac Pro for the wrong reason. So if you're saying it's gonna look tidier and neater, then nah, I'm not on with you on this one. Because at the end of the day, you're buying the Mac Pro to stick different cards and slots inside it and things are gonna be dangling out of the back of it. So it is gonna be very messy at the back. So I wouldn't say you're buying a Mac Pro over a Mac Studio for a cleaner look at all. But as I said already, the main thing that's bothering me about this is that you can pick up a Mac Studio for $4,000 with that M2 Ultra, it's the binned version of it, and this exact same chipset is inside the Mac Pro, yet it costs $3,000 more, starting at $7,000. And to me, that is absolutely crazy. In my opinion, if it was, say, about $1,000 more to have those four PCI slots inside it, maybe Apple could bite their lip and say, yeah, that's acceptable. Because at the end of the day, you can buy yourself a really decent motherboard out there for a standard PC, and you can actually get four sort of PCIe slots, and it would nowhere near cost, you know, over a thousand dollars more to have that over something like I said had only one or two PCI slots inside it. It's absolutely crazy that Apple are charging three thousand dollars more for that ability. Now, looking back at the old Intel Mac Pro that came out in 2019, that also had a lot of other upgrade abilities inside it. You could stick in graphics cards inside it, and we're not too sure yet if Apple are going to allow graphics cards to be put inside the Mac Pro. We know that video capture cards and sound capture cards and things like this are gonna be allowed inside it, but we're not too sure about graphics cards, because at the end of the day, if you're a person going, cool, I can stick my RTX 4090 inside this Mac Pro, for a while now, I'll probably say about a good six, seven years, Apple have not supported anything from NVIDIA for a long, long time. It doesn't look like that's going to change anytime soon. So don't get too excited over that. The same with AMD as well. Really, ever since the switch over to Apple Silicon, Apple really haven't touched on AMD chipsets or anything to do with their graphics. So again, I could be wrong here. It doesn't look like they're going to be compatible with the Mac Pro. Then we finally get round to RAM. The total amount of RAM that you can put inside this Mac Pro is 192 gigabytes. Compared to the 2019 model, you could actually upgrade the RAM yourself and it could be upgraded to 1.5 terabytes. So that is a big, massive change there. I know a lot of you fanboys out there are gonna say, well, Apple Silicon runs completely different to x86 Intel chipsets, you know, and how it utilizes RAM. But come on, 1.5 terabytes to 192 gigabytes, that is gonna make a lot of difference, no matter you know what kind of chipset you are running on. So really what I think I'm trying to say here is that $3,000 for you know, just those PCI slots and everything else that I mentioned, it's just really not worth it. And you know, with $3,000, you could buy something like this. This is something I've never shown you guys. This is actually my gaming rig here. And I actually only built this about a month or two ago. But let me go over the specs for you. This gaming PC has four times PCIe slots and it has an AMD 7800X3D inside it, 64 gigabytes of RAM, a four terabyte SSD and an AMD 6900XTX and that also has 24 gigabytes of RAM that is built inside it. Now, I did build this computer myself, but it cost me around about 2,500 US dollars. And that's the point. This cost me 2,500 US dollars, and it is one of the most powerful sort of gaming PCs that you can get out there. And basically, Apple are gonna be charging you $3,000 just to have four PCIe slots and two extra Thunderbolt ports, and also the ability to upgrade expensive storage. You can see my point, it's just not worth it. And for anybody out there, generally most people, apart from if you're working in the movies, you know, at Universal, Disney, Paramount, all of that, I would say for most of you guys, probably just the standard Mac Studio with an M2 Max or an M2 Ultra, if you really do need that horsepower, is gonna be more than enough for you. And personally, if it was me, I would rather buy the M2 Ultra Mac Studio and then also buy my gaming PC with that spare change instead of buying myself a Mac Pro with it and just having an all-in-one system there. To me, that is far more worth it. 
But I would love to know your thoughts on this too. Do you think the Mac Pro is now really, really niche and is really expensive for what it is? And do you think a Mac Studio is definitely more worth getting? I'd love to know your thoughts, so please do put them down in the comments below. And at the same time, guys, if you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons just like today, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I will see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.